Hi, and welcome to another episode of Playful Strategy Weekly. I'm Van Vanhorst, a brand and marketing strategy consultant, and I specialize in everything to do with play. And as you might know by now, in these episodes, I go over different principles from different books I read and study about play. And you know what I realized? So we went over the six character, core characteristics of what play is as defined by sociologist Roger Caillois in his book that I'm reading, in, that I read in French, I've read it a while ago, to be honest, uh, Man, Play and Games. But we jumped straight into each definition aspect and I gave a few examples. And I thought to wrap this section up and before going into the next section, which is going to be about uh, game types and game categories. So categories of play and games as described in the books, I realized I didn't even introduce what the book was, who the author was. We just like went kind of like straight into the action in media res, as it were, sort of. I mean, it's not a big climactic battle. Uh, nor the beginning of a James Bond episode. It's just me in front of my webcam talking to my microphone with my book in hand. And um, so just a little bit about the book. Uh, Man, Play and Games is uh, an influential book about sociology. Uh, Roger Caillois was an influential sociologist from the mid, uh, mid of the 20th century, pretty much. Uh, this book itself was published in French in 1958. The whole idea was that he picked up on theories from uh, another search researcher called Johann Hudsinger. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm probably butchering it. I apologize. Who had written about games. Uh, and he was a Dutch historian, basically. Uh, and the whole point is that games and play have been an inherent part of human culture and on, on another field of study, on evolutionary biology, we noticed that the play appear in all animals, particularly in mammals, but uh, there have been research shown that play has shown up in all kinds of animals. And the fascination is that it comes usually in opposition with work or with anything to do with anything productive, except that at the same time, it is present everywhere in nature. Uh, archaeology has shown that from as far as we can remember human society, as long as there's been language, there's been games and pretty intricate and complicated games. Uh, there's presence and proof of there being games thousands of years ago. I think some of the oldest were between three and 5,000 years old. Uh, and so Roger Caillois goes into studying and researching all the different social structures that are associated with play and with games. What are all the different kinds of play and games that appear in human society? Uh, what type of role do they have or does he think they have what kinds of behaviors are associated with different forms of play with human beings and human societies and uh, as we went through there's six core characteristics the fact that play as an activity is free not obligatory other searchers and thinkers about play have come up with very similar characteristics slightly different coming from one or another and you will see in other future books how that comes out and we've given examples every time because my whole idea is that i believe that we have for centuries uh, and not that many centuries on the history of humanity, but certainly since the Middle Ages and generally speaking, Judeo-Christian society, Western society, actually probably Asian too, but I'm interested in seeing how that's different, uh, has put work in opposition with play. And I say that's not necessarily the case. And there can be playful characteristics to anything and particularly creative brand communications. Uh, brand communications and anything to do with what's interesting and you'll often notice that the most successful brand communications advertising or the ones that we want that we do remember that we do notice are they going to be the ones that do have some play playful characteristics in some way or another also that play appears on a spectrum so it comes in a like it's not all there or all not all there. It's not really black and white. It comes on a spectrum, although that's something that I say. He doesn't really say that in the book. Um, and so we went over the different core characteristics as defined in the book. And we're going to talk about different other aspects of society related to play and to games. And some of the other aspects is that in the book, he talks about different types of play that he calls ludus and paidia. And he also talks about categories of play called agon, everything to do with competition. Alia, or chance, all sorts of games of chance, anything to do with randomized options. Uh, mimicry, anything to do with role-playing and make-believe. And illinks, or vertigo, anything that is altering perception in nature. 
So he believes that anything to do with play as an activity uh, fits within the definition characteristics that I gave in the first six episodes or in uh, the different types of play or the different categories of play. And there's a whole big chart that comes, I mean, not a very big chart, but there's a chart. And for each one of them, he goes into different societal examples of how they come up, uh, how they come up in society, how they come up in behaviors, how they come up in games, etc. So we're going to talk about all these different aspects. And every time I'll keep giving uh, examples of brands. And but for this particular episode, I've probably talked already a little bit too much. Um, and as we go, I'll develop playful strategy weekly in different areas. And, you know, if you think of anything to ask me, don't hesitate. If you have any questions, post it in the comments or you can always at me on Twitter. I'm uh, at IC Villem, the letters I and C for ice cream and W-I-L-L-E-M, my name, basically, or on Instagram. Or you can find Ice Cream for Everyone on Facebook. You can subscribe and like those videos, subscribe to the channel find my audio podcast, all those different jazz. And if you're interested in working with me, please don't hesitate. Always happy to have a chat. Um, and that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.